So far, we've let users browse the menu, add items from the menu to an order, and then see a screen showing their total number of items in that order. What we haven't done yet is provide a mechanism to actually confirm that order, to check out on that order. Now, while we're not actually gonna send something off to a server somewhere, I do at least wanna take this opportunity to show you a really cool feature of SwiftUI, which is forms. Now, forms are like stacks, they're containers, but they're specifically designed for any kind of place like setting screens or user input, any place where you wanna make several choices in one place. Now, forms do a few interesting things, as you'll see shortly. Along the way, I'll show you some common UI controls from SwiftUI, such as pickers or text fields and segmented controls, all in code. Now, I know what you're thinking, surely text fields are easy. Well, they aren't hard, but they also don't work like you're used to if you've come from somewhere like UIKit. To get things up and running, I'll make a new SwiftUI view. So press Command N, make another new view, choose SwiftUI view, and then name this thing Checkout View. Boom. Uh, as before, it has to have the same environment object, the order, so it understands what order is being placed right now. So I'll do this view, I'm gonna add, at environment object var order is an order. And then put it into the preview as well to make sure the preview works. So we'll save the checkout view down here. There's an environment object of an empty order. And I'll press option command P to resume the preview in my canvas area on the right. Boom, hello world. So that's the easy stuff out of the way. Let's try something new. Let's show a picker with various payment options. Users can choose cash, they can choose credit card, or they can choose iDyne points, because our app is called iDyne. And this requires two new properties. First, we need a property to store all possible values we want to show in our picker. So I'll say, let payment types be an array of cash, credit card, and then also, oops, also, uh, come on Hudson, iDyne points. There we go. Second, we have to make a property where SwiftUI will store the value that's currently selected in the picker. You see, uh, when our UI changes state from A to B to C or whatever, um, SwiftUI wants to know about it. It wants to know what's changed and where it's being stored so we can update our view. So our code and our view stay in sync the entire time. Um, for example, maybe you've, you've checked a box that should show some new views. Now, rather than us sort of watching these changes by hand and updating variables by hand, uh, we, we do instead is we bind our picker to a property on this struct. We say this struct's uh, property here belongs to this picker here. What this means is when the picker's value changes from A to B to C or cash to credit card to iodine points, the underlying value changes as well. They both change in sync the entire time. And so just like uh, environment object, when one of these state values changes, SwiftUI will update the body property to make sure any changes that have been made are now reflected in the body. So we already used environment object here for working with data that comes from some external source, uh, and the environment. And we use state object in uh, the iDyne app to make our initial order. Here, this data is just for our view. And that means it's gonna be a simple value not some external class that conforms to observable object, a simple value, like an integer or a string or an array, any local thing like a, like a Boolean, for example. Now, SwiftUI gives us a dedicated property wrapper for this purpose, which is at state, at state. And our object, at state object, at state. And it works similarly to environment object in that if that value changes somehow, it will refresh our UI to reflect that change. But designed for the simple local values only, Boolean, strings, integers, doubles, arrays of strings, and so forth. If you want to use classes that are shared between views, you've got to use a state object, environment object, or something else. Now, if you want to use simple values that are used only by the current view, in this case it is here, Apple recommends you mark these using the private protection, just to really reiterate they aren't designed for lots of views to look at. Okay, let's add this 
property to uh, check out view now. At state, private var, payment type is cash. That's a default value we're using for this payment type. And now we can fill in our body property. We'll add a picker. Uh, and this is all new, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the code first then kind of go over what it all does. We'll say in our body, there's a vstack with a section inside and a picker saying, how do you want to pay? And a selection for that we bound to dollar payment type. Inside there, I'll say, let's hide this left-hand bar here, make some space. There's a for each of payment types using ID of backslash dot self and text dollar zero. And then at the end of our uh, VStack here, I'll say the navigation title of payment and navigation bar display mode uh, of dot in line. Boom, okay. Let's break that down. <laughs> We've got a vertical stack here of one section, one piece of data in our stuff here. This section contains a picker here with a label, how do you want to pay? I'll press uh, Option Command P so you can see it on the right hand side here. How do you want to pay? And you can see in our preview, it doesn't say how do you want to pay, it's just a regular iOS spinning wheel thing here. Um, the label's not visible right now, but it's gonna change in a moment. Uh, we've bound the value of the picker to payment type. So the default will be cash. But as the wheel moves around, as it changes, it'll update that string value. Uh, inside the picker, we loop over our payment types array string using the string itself as its unique identifier. Remember, anywhere you have dynamic data, not just fixed rows in a list or fixed items in a picker, any dynamic data, you've got to have an identifier. SwiftUI knows how to identify each value here uniquely. And we have a uh, payment title plus the uh, inline small text navigation bar at the top. The real question here, I hope you've noticed, is here. Why is it dollar payment type and not just payment type? What does that dollar sign do? 